fixed gaze I said purpose You are the joy set before us With fresh vision New strategies Your banner of love is our victory All eyes on you All eyes on you You are my first love All eyes on you All eyes on you Holy desire The fire in your eyes is consuming Fresh zeal is awakening Banner of love is our victory All eyes on you, all eyes on you You are my first love All eyes on you, all eyes on you Cause all eyes on you, all eyes on you You are my first love The sun when it rises in strength Your faithfulness surrounds us with peace Your mighty hand strong to deliver You are our shelter, our resting place Watch as my enemies, they run in fear But as I keep my gaze on you I am steadfast, cannot be moved in All eyes on you, all eyes on you You are my first love All eyes on you, all eyes on you Cause all eyes on you, all eyes on you you are my first love All eyes on you All eyes on you Good day everyone It's so great being together again Even if it's over the airwaves um, But it's wonderful To just be able to come together and to just celebrate the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the host of heavens. How beautiful it is to when we ponder and think about who our God is, our Savior, the Holy Spirit, how He comes and He just comes and breathes and hovers over us and how we just rejuvenate our bodies and how we rejuvenate our spirits and how we can feel as God the Father just comes and, and comfort us and we can experience even in, this, in the season and the time that we are still in that although things may look not right and things may look different and things may be difficult for a lot of us, we have that absolute knowing that God is on the throne and God is the one that's holding us the Holy Spirit is the one brewing and comforting us isn't that a great and wonderful thought and a great and wonderful knowledge and knowing to know that we are safe with him I want to speak this morning out of my heart what God shared with me but before we do let's let's pray together father thank you that we can be excited. Thank you that we can celebrate you. Thank you that we know that as we have our being within you, we are strong and we are mighty and we are the overcomers. We are more than conquerors. And thank you, Father, that as we move and have our being, we participate with you out of a place of rest, out of a place of knowing we serve the King of Kings. 
we are sons of God Almighty. We praise you, we glorify you, we bring you all the thanks and the praise out of the deepest of our hearts because we love you more than anything in this world. Amen. Amen. This morning or afternoon, evening, whenever you are watching this, I would like to share on something that the Lord started just dealing with me out of the word. And that's the thing, the thing that I want to talk about is hands. The Lord just dropped that word in my heart, hands. And as I started to ponder about it, start revealing and unveiling to me hands and especially the power that's in our hands if you think about it you know what um so often we've got a saying um all around the world let me lend you a hand let me give you a hand what do you have in your hand and if you think about it and you start thinking about it how important is hands in this world just think about it for a moment in our daily lives if you don't have hands those people that don't have hands how they need to compensate for the fact that they don't have hands how much do we do with our hands and if you start to think about it, and I thought about it, and, and, and almost like sum it up the role that hands play in our lives. And when I thought about it, is um, when you look at hands, the four, I would say, biggest things for me regarding hands is the following. We create or we work with our hands. That's the one thing. We exchange with our hands. I'm exchanging whatever I've got with my hands through to you, and I take whatever you give me with my hands. We instruct with our hands. If you've got a lot of workers, or let's take a more simple, easy exercise, um, example, a traffic officer he stands at an intersection and he instructs with his hands and people obey. And then we protect or save ourselves with our hands. Think about it. How many times when you stumble and fall, what do you do? The first thing that happens, you reach out with your hands to stop you from falling on your face. We protect ourselves with our hands. If somebody attacks you, what do you do? The first thing is you protect yourself. You protect your face. You protect your, your body with your hands. So hands is quite a significant part that it plays a role, a significant role that it plays in our lives. And when I thought about it all, I went and have a look at the significant role that hands play in the Bible. And when I first turned to the Bible, I thought, I first th gave the thought about God's hands. And right in the beginning of all times, God's hand played an amazing role. And just to show how unique and how special we are, if we look at creation, God created the earth. He spoke a word and it was created. Everything. The light, the, the animals, everything. He spoke a, the living word and it was created. But then when he came to man, it says in Genesis that he formed out of the dust of the earth. He formed man into the image. Now, if I'm correct... To form something, you need to use your hands. God used His hands to form us into the image that He wanted. And then He blew into our nostrils life. So how unique that we as His sons, He could have spoke a word and you could have appeared as an image. But he formed you out of the dust of the earth with his hands. 
in order to establish and to create us. Isn't that an amazing thought? Isn't that just giving you that absolute knowing how special you are to the Father, that He actually took the effort to create us with His hands. And when we go and read in the Word, we see how significant role the Father's hands play in our lives as His sons. And I want to read to you <clears throat> out of the Word just to show to us how significant it is. I mean, if we go to the word in Isaiah 41 verse 3, sorry, verse 13, it says, For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. I am the Lord who says to you, Fear not, I will help you. So clearly in the word, it indicates to us how God comes and how He basically upholds us. With his right hand. His hand of protection over us. As we've mentioned in the beginning. Like I've mentioned to you. How we protect with our hands. God comes in with his right hand. He protects us. He upholds us. And he's the one that's helping us. If we go to Isaiah 49 verse 16. It says there. Behold I have edibly imprinted, tattooed, a picture of you in the palm of each of my hands, your walls continually before me. So here God the Father says, you know what? You are so special to me that I've engraved, the one translation says, I engraved your name in the palm of my hands. That's how special you are. I'm protecting you. I'm covering you with my hands. And, and that's, that's just the love of the Father. If we go to, to, to John 10 verse 29, it says, My Father who has given them to me as His gift is the mightiest of all, and no one has the power to snatch them from my Father's care. One translation says, Snatch them out of his hands. So the father says, you know what? I'm brewing. I'm, I'm holding my hands over you. And that's what the father does. He's got us in his hands. Our names are engraved in the palm of his hands. And his protection and his covering is over us. Holding us. Safeguarding us. And the word give us a promise that no one will snatch us. Out of his hands. That is such an amazing promise. That's such an amazing uh, peaceful comfortness for us to know that as long as we keep ourselves in Christ, there's no one, no trials, no tribulations, no nothing in this world can snatch you from the hand of God because He's got you covered, He's got your back. As the saying goes, He is protecting you with His almighty hands. Um, even with the days of Moses, when Moses led out the, the um, Israel uh, to the promised land, God said to Moses, I am the one that's got you covered in my hands. His name, He also told Moses that your name is engraved in the palm of my hands. So clearly we can see and understand that God is the one. God is the one that's truly covering and giving us that protection. And what's so important further on, if we look at, at the hands, and when I was thinking about hands, I start realizing how important our hands is. If we look at the spirit aspect, how powerful our hands is. You know what, if we look at the Psalm 144 verse 2, David says, this, Blessed be the Lord, my rock, and me keen at firm strength, who teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. You know what, is that importance, how important is our, if God's hands are so important, if God uses His hands in order to protect His right hand, in order to comfort, to, to shield us, in order to direct us, how much more, if we are created in His image, is our hands 
so important for us. The importance of our hands, the power that is lined up in our hands. And we need to understand that. You know what, just something which is quite significant and interesting, if you go to the medical world, there is a significance and there is an interest. You can read it all up. The connection between our hands and our heart. There is a, a major vein running from our heart to our hands. And that already tells us, our heart and our hand, how that is connected. And we know that in our hearts, we truly are connected and in our hearts we're in a truly intimate relationship with the Father and the connection to our hands. Our hands play important vital role in our spiritual life regarding the power and what is locked up in our hands. How many times have we heard that people will say, what do you have in your hands? How many times we read in the Word that God would say, what do you have in your hands? Bring what you've got in your hands. And when I thought about this whole aspect of the power in our hands and what we have in our hands, it took me to the Word and it took me to a very well-known passage, which we all have read so many times, even from, from, from um, when we were still in, at a young age. And the, the, the cute, nice Bible stories. And one of them that we all so truly know is the multiplication of the food that Jesus did. And I'm going to read out of the Passion Translation in John. John 6, verse 5 to 13. Let me read it to you. As Jesus sat down, he looked out and saw the massive crowd of people scrambling up the hill, for they wanted to be near him. So he turned to Philip and said, Where will we buy enough food to feed all these people? So first he was addressing this to the apostles, but for a reason. Now Jesus already knew what he was about to do, but he said, to, he said this to stretch Philip's faith. Philip answered, Well, I suppose if we were to give everyone only a snack, it would have cost us thousands of dollars to buy enough food. But just then, Andrew, Peter's brother, spoke up and said, Look, here's a young person with five barley loaves and two small fish. But how far would that go with this huge crowd. Let's just ponder for a moment there. So they, they, they are faced with this quite big challenge. Again, I think if you people know me by this time, no problems in this world. For us as Christians, it's all challenges. Because challenges are something that can be overcome. Remember that. So now they're sitting with these multitudes of people. They need to feed them. Jesus just said, well, you give them food. So now Andrew come with this boy and he provide, he comes with this boy with five loaves and two fishes. Where? He's got it in his hands. So he comes with this little boy. I can see the picture as Andrew comes with this little boy on the shoulder. He's guiding him here to Jesus and he's got this five loaves and two fishes. I mean, with these small little hands, it must have... He must have juggled very nicely to keep it all together in his two little hands. And he's presenting the five loaves and two fishes. And I mean, they all were baffled, you know. Oh my goodness gracious, yes, Andrew. Well, poof, five loaves, two fishes. I think if we can just huddle together here, yeah, we can have a bit of a snack. Um, but he presents that to Jesus. Okay, and let's further read. What Jesus said, he says, have everyone sit down, Jesus said to the disciples. So on the vast grassy slope, more than 5,000 hungry people sat down. Jesus then took the barley loaves and the fish and gave thanks to God. So what happened? Small boy, with five loaves, two fishes in his small little hands, handed over that which he had in his hands 
into the hands of, oh my goodness, the Savior, the King of this world, the Creator, into His hands. And Jesus took those hands and after He thanked the Father, let's read further. He says, have everyone sat down and Jesus took the barley loaves and the fish and gave thanks to God. He then gave it back to his disciples to, dis to distribute to the people. So, please follow me here. Here's an exchange happening here. First, the little boy comes with his bread and his fish. Then he exchanges which he's got in his hands into the hand of the Almighty. Then Jesus takes these bread and the fish. He thanks God. And then there's an exchange. Follow me again, happening. He's giving back into the hands of the disciples. Miraculously, the food multiplied with everyone eating as much as they wanted. But what happened? He thanked God for the food. When he handed it over, it wasn't this massive barley of food. It wasn't this bags and bags and, 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 and baskets full of food which he handed over to the disciples. He handed it back into their hands. They had to take the act of faith taking what they receive, the exchange in their hands and start to distributing it. As soon as they start distributing the food, miraculously, the miracle happened and the food were multiplied. When everyone was satisfied, Jesus told his disciples, now go back and gather up the pieces left over so that nothing will be wasted. So they gathered up everything that was left. The disciples filled up 12 baskets of fragments, a basket of leftovers for each disciple. So here we see an amazing story of an exchange that happens. And so often we stand and we, we've got something in our hands. And you know what? It's not by our might, but our strength. But it's in the might and the strength of our Lord Savior. And all that God the Father is asking us, whatever you have in your hand, bring it to me. And as soon as we place that faith, that what we have in our hands, and we place it in the hand of the Father, He, he goes and He exchanges back into our hands. He exchanged back into our hands the mighty miracle, the answer. Whatever you need in your life at that specific moment, He exchanged into our hands. And when I read this whole passage, I just realized again the power that's locked up in our hands. And how we must again start looking at our hands out of a different perspective out of heaven's perspective because it's all locked up in our hands it is all already given into our hands we start we just need like the disciples as the exchange that we've made with God the Father we need to take whatever is in our hands and we need to release that which is in our hands out of our hands light shine when we start to cooperate with God the Father Life-changing light starts to shine and we will see things happen in our hands. But we need to come to the point where we make the exchange like this little boy. He brought five loaves, two fishes and in the hand of God, he made the exchange in order to have in his hands the power. And the exchange that he made was in order to be powerful and to participate and cooperate with the Father. And you know what? You may sit here this morning and say, you know what, Rian? But I don't have anything in my hands. I don't have anything in my hands. No, 
You have something in your hands. Because what do we do? We lift up our hands when we come before God the Father. And what do we do when we lift up our hands? We start to give Him praise. You have praise and thanksgiving in your hands. As we come before God the Father and I lift up my hands and I say, I praise you. I glorify you. I bring you the honor and the praise this morning, Father, because you are amazing. You are great. You are glorious. And as I bring unto you out of my hands the praises that belong to you, the admiration, the love, and the so much ecstasy and excitement, Lord. And as I celebrate before you and dance before you, that, my friend, that is what you are offering. That is what's in your hands this morning. So don't feel like you've got nothing in your hands. When you lift up your hands in praise, you offering unto God the praises out of your hands. And God the Father says, yes, I can work with that. Because as we bring that as a, as a present, as a sacrifice, and we lay it before Him out of our hands, God takes that out of our hands and He makes an exchange into our hands back again. And He says, there you go, son, the power is lined up in your hands. And as David says, God taught him how to fight with his hands. He teaches his fingers to fight, his hands to war. And God laid it up in our hands and He says, go out, son, because you are powerful. You are an overcomer. Just project your hands forward and in faith start moving and start operating, participating with me in the power that's locked up in your hands. And I want to encourage you this morning is to start praising God. There's a power in the praise because as we praising, like I've just mentioned, we bring unto him out of our hands. We're bringing unto him a sacrifice. We're bringing unto him that which we have and we do exchange into the power that he locks up into our hands in order to start participating, manifesting out of our hands, creating into this realm. Where we are participating, where we are in, where we start to creating and bringing about the glory of God the Father. So I trust and believe that you will be encouraged through this word. And don't see yourself little. Don't see yourself that you've got nothing. You have praise and thanksgiving locked up in your hands. Exchange that for the power that's locked up in His hands. Because the, Lord, the, the Word says that our, when we put our little faith, our hand in His hand, mighty and powerful are we to accomplish and to conquer. And I encourage you, even in the season where you feel you have nothing, you have much in Christ. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that we can come before you knowing, Lord, that you have empowered us with the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And thank you that as we exchange what we have in our hands, Lord, into your hands, you empower us to be great and mighty conquerors and vessels, Lord, who can participate in your loved act here on earth. We celebrate you. We glorify you and we thank you, Lord, that we can go out with that knowing and that knowledge of what we have in our hands and we can be true ambassadors, true conquerors, Lord, for the kingdom of heaven. We praise you, we honor you, and we love you. And we pray it all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. People, go out and be that mighty conquerors which God Almighty have destined and planned and created you to be. Remember, you were formed by His hands. Amen.